the voice of the Lord in my preparation for the sermon, you're going to see this. I mean, this phrase or, or these words, we're talking about the voice of the Lord is used a lot in Scripture, right? more than I even realized. But when you go back and just kind of study it through and look it out, you, you'll find, um, which just confirms already what I what I'd already known and, and believed to be true about, you know, the, the voice of the Lord. We're going to see some attributes here that on the surface are, are kind of just real physical attributes. Like you say, uh, in, in, in many places in the Bible talks about the voice of the Lord being like the sound of, of many waters. Right, where that's kind of like a physical description of what you would hear audibly of the voice of the Lord. But what we're going to see here in this passage are all characteristics of the voice of the Lord, which can also be um, seen as the Word of God. Just the Word, you know, the voice of the Lord, it's, it, what's he, what is the voice? He's speaking something. The whole point that it even mentions the voice of the Lord is because of the words that he's speaking. So uh, whether that be the commandments, the law, the covenant, or just God's words, you know, that is what is being referenced here when it's talking about the voice of the Lord. And we're going to see some really cool attributes here. But before I even get ahead of myself, I just, I kind of want to prove some of these things from Scripture. Like I said, you can go through and do the word study on your own and, and check it out. I mean, it's all over the place, all over the place, voice of the Lord. And you'll see very clearly and very quickly how often that's, that's referenced. But look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we're going to start reading verse number 22. This is just after he gives the, the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy 5. Obviously in Exodus 20, we got the Ten Commandments, and then Deuteronomy 5, we get them, and then it says in verse 22, These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And he added no more, and he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. So one of the reasons what, you know, when we're looking at the voice of the Lord is because God actually spake these words. Like Exodus 20 says, and God spake these words saying, you know, thou shalt have no other gods. But, you know, and, it is just, just, and then the whole rest of the chapters is God literally speaking. So he's speaking his words and they're hearing his words. Voice. So let's keep reading here in uh, Deuteronomy 5, look at verse 23. And it came to pass, when he heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man and he liveth. And this is, this is already showing you how great of an event this is. It is a great event that God is, I mean, they're, they're, they're in awe that God has shown his glory, his brightness, his greatness. He's revealed himself unto man. And they're like, we even heard his voice. And not only that, we heard his voice and, and we're still alive. They're like, the only people who could possibly could have ever heard the voice of the Lord, you know, they're not around anymore to tell about it. And they're saying, look, we're still, we, we're still here. We live. God talks with man and we live it. And, um, now, but, they, but they're also scared of God. They have, a, they have a healthy fear of the Lord at this point. And I say healthy because God even says to listen unto them when they, when they give this, um, this response. Look at verse 25. It says, Now therefore, why should we die? And they say, why should we die? One, because they know that God is extremely powerful, right? That God demands, you know, what, being in the presence of the Lord causes everybody in the Bible who's ever been in the presence of the Lord to fall flat on their face and to be trembling and shaking and just, just completely go to nothing in the presence of God because God is that powerful and God is that just, just so awe-inspiring. And you can, you know, I'm sure you just feel the power of the Lord. You see his glory. And um, so they say that. But not only that, God's a holy God too, right? So that's also going to instill fear in a sinful people, people who are not perfect, trying to be in the presence of a perfectly sinless, holy God and be like, whoa, I, you know, I'd... And, you know, think about it for yourself. If you're just envision, you know, just having the presence of God be with you, what would be going through your mind is being like, wow, I, I shouldn't even be here. You know, like, I don't deserve to be here at all. I shouldn't be here. I can't believe it. And you know what all of your sins are and just going like, I'm ashamed. I'm embarrassed. I shouldn't, you know, like, I, I can't face you, God, because of who I am, right, and who God is. So this is, this is you know, completely understand why they would have this type of an attitude. So now, therefore, why should we die for this great fire will consume us? 
If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more than we shall die, for who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near, and so speaking in Moses, go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. So God's saying, you know what? What they said, they're right in saying that. It was good that they said that, and I am going to deal with you, Moses. And, and of course, that's what he did. God gave Moses all the commandments and the law, and then Moses relayed the word of the Lord unto the people. Verse 29, Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever.